Hey, Internets, it's Jake, and welcome to the first Imagine, Build, Play, Win live encounter building and terrain planning session. If you are watching this recorded, that's okay. You can see how I kind of go about designing some terrain. So, first, Imagine, Build, Play, Win. Let's get rid of that. So, let me tell you a moment before we get started here what Imagine Build Play Win is. All right, don't worry. I'm not going to make you look at my ugly mug for the whole time. We'll get back to the design table here in a moment. Imagine Build Play Win is the new series from Mini Terrain Domain where it takes place over the course of a month. And we're going to do this through uh, June or through May. I um, have to check the site to be sure. And we're kind of just testing this out. And I say we because it's, I don't know why, it's me primarily. Um, but I've got some friends that are helping out with this. And, and I also say we because we include you, the community. Uh, we started at the beginning of this week, just seven days ago on Monday. I put the theme out there. And um, everybody had an opportunity to submit ideas for the theme winter. Um, after the first two days, I looked through all of the submissions. And we got a lot of submissions for the first time out. Uh, I felt it was a lot. I think there was about 15 of them. Um, so I looked through those submissions. I have to decide what is feasible for me to build within a two-week window because that's what I'm doing for the next two weeks. And keeping in mind, I have a full-time job and I have to do this in the evenings. Uh, Okay, I apologize. Uh, hopefully, this is continuing on like it's supposed to. Good Lord, this is what I get for trying to be fancy with all of the stuff going on here. Okay, all right. Thank you. Jason and Wylock, you say that I'm back. All right, that's good. I'm not going to try to push a whole lot of buttons here. Um, as I was saying, we had some great ideas. Uh, the next part of the phase was the voting phase, where you, the community, voted on the ideas that uh, would be crafted. Um, and the overwhelming vote was for Tony T's uh, a frozen river with a bridge and an abandoned guard station. So, part two is of, or rather, part B, I guess, of the imagine phase, um, or you could say that this is the beginning of the build phase, is figuring out what I'm going to build. So now I'm going to make you, I'm going to have you stop looking at my uh, mug, and I'm going to try to move, do this without clicking on the hang up button. 
I'm going to switch the camera over here so you can look back down here at my desktop surface. And we'll get everything straightened around because this is going to be a pain in the butt if everything's backwards. At least I know it would be for me trying to watch it. So give me a quick second. Flip that. This is what happens when your setup crashes on you. Okay. So everybody should be able to see the surface here. Um, hopefully it's not too low res. Um, I'll just use dark lines. So I'm going to move some of this uh, set decoration here. And we're going to get started. And I've got the, the uh, live chat open. And I encourage you, I'll be looking uh, right ahead up here at the computer screen. Um, as I start to design this, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and um, let me move my window here. You're catching a little bit of that. There we go. All right. So I would encourage you to go ahead and throw your ideas into the live chat. I'll take a break every couple minutes and, and just look up there and if I have to scroll back. Um, but I'm going to start designing this encounter, and it's the, the encounter and the terrain that I'm going to be building. So if you've been watching Mini Terrain Domain, you've seen that I've built some stuff. Uh, if you're new, if you're new to Mini Terrain Domain, let me just show you excuse me, a little bit here. This is just one thing that I've built recently. Uh, this is in 28 millimeter scale, also happens to be in HO scale. Uh, this is Fast Kill from the Absolute Tabletop Supplement uh, Goblin Go-Karts. Um, but just so you know what you're in for if you're here to see more the, the encounter building and the terrain building. Um, so without further ado, the concept is a frozen river and a bridge and an abandoned guard tower. Uh, so we're going to have to come up with the encounter itself and the terrain. So I kind of want to figure out what this terrain is going to be like. I'm going to be playing this in a couple weeks. We'll either be live broadcasting it or playing a recording of it. Um, and it's going to be me and three other guys actually playing with miniatures on the terrain. So you'll get to see the finished product in, in close up. So I got to keep in mind a good tabletop setup. So I like to keep my uh, my big old 18 inch ruler here. Um, this whole overall surface that I'm drawing on is 11 by 17, though you can only see a portion of it. Um, And obviously, I'm not going to draw this to scale. So I just kind of want to get an idea of what a good size is for a piece of terrain. And I'm thinking that 20 by 20 is probably going to be a really good, nice square piece. So that's going to give us a basic... I'm just going to start sketching all over this thing. So let's just do a real small thumbnail. And I'm, I mean real small. Let me not make it that small because you guys need to be able to see this. So, uh, Raymond, HO Scale Railroad, does that just about equal 28 millimeter character figs? Uh, it's pretty darn close, um, at least as far as this, this go-kart was concerned. Um, <laughs> the trains themselves, probably a little bit smaller. I think O Scale is probably more appropriate. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I love using this graph paper. Uh, you can kind of see my MTD logo, so obviously this is a uh, custom graph paper uh, that I'll be using for these shows. I'm a little bit OCD sometimes about doing things with the grid, so I try to, I'll try try not to stick too closely with that. So this is just for our initial sketch. We'll get drawn over uh, this stuff a little bit more um, as we get going. But I'm trying to think, now you could kind of go with your, uh, you know, your rules of thirds and use a nice composition. Look, thinking of this in terms of from the face down, I kind of, all right, here, first question for you guys to sound off in the chat if you're there. 
I'm debating running the river diagonally, having the bridge more or less as the centerpiece, and then having the guard tower kind of over here. Or should we go for kind of having the river be uh, along like this with, with the bridge with one end of it kind of, this is where the PCs are going to start in the corner and then have the guard tower be more in this area to allow for more, basically most of the encounter will take place around here. My thoughts on that are that if we do it with the river running through this way, then you limit the tactical options of the players. If we run it in the middle, then there's a lot more tactical options for the players to move across the bridge, uh, use parts of the bridge itself for cover. Uh, this is going to be a frozen river, so there's a chance for there to be some uh, chunks of ice that they could maneuver into, uh, things like that. Now, keep in mind, of course, it's a general encounter. So what do you guys think? Should we cut one of the corners for the river and start in the corner, or should we split the terrain piece right down the middle diagonally for uh, the bridge to go across the middle. Give me a quick shout out in the comments if you have an idea on that. Um, and while, while I give you a minute to post in on that, I'm going to give you an idea of what I'm thinking in terms of the actual um, bridge itself. Now this is just a quick sketch because we don't know the the scale yet um, of what you know the size how wide the river is and all that kind of stuff but I'm, I'm thinking like old school medieval stone bridge and you know those kind that kind of arch up in the middle so there's a rise and then it'll have these uh, archways that the river flows through and then we'll have some uh, decorative stonework around the edges there um, and then uh, this will be probably some cobblestone similar to uh, some of the previous crafting terrains that I've done um, so yeah, so I'm thinking like the the stonework in the in the last ones, uh, probably not with the river stone, probably more of the grays and things like that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for bridge. I want this to be big enough because I'm thinking that I'm going to have. So okay, so my players, there's a good chance that they're watching this. Um, that's the one downside to doing these live shows, uh, but. I think that uh, I'm going to always hold something back to surprise even you, the viewers, when we come to the actual live game. So I'm only going to tell part of this. So I've got at least a two-tiered encounter planned here. Um, go ahead and give me some feedback in the comments if you think maybe it could go, uh, if you have some other ideas. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roughly say that we're going to have the PCs at around uh, fifth level. Um, and that's a good point for me to say, I plan on running at least this encounter as a fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, most of my stuff will be run as fifth edition D and D. Um, it doesn't mean it will always be that way, but most of the time it will be. So um, we may have some opportunity to do stuff with star Wars or other sci-fi stuff in the future. At any rate, so I'm thinking fifth level PCs, and I'm thinking we could do that the abandoned guard tower, maybe it's not so abandoned. Uh, maybe there are, I'm thinking a bunch of goblins, or uh, maybe, you know, now that I'm saying fifth level, goblins might be a little too easy for them. Um, and maybe we could throw in some uh, bugbears. Um, I kind of like that. Maybe a couple of couple of squads of goblins and a bugbear chieftain. Or okay, what about this? Um, so let's say uh, 
I, I agree with what Wylock says in the um, comments. Opportunity for an epic ranged battle if we go centerpiece. That's kind of where I was leaning. Um, it's not going to be a straight across river. Obviously, this looks more like a highway. Um, I'm going to do, when we get to the actual crafting part of it, uh, we'll come up with some nice meandering through there. So if we go like this to represent our bridge, and then we throw the guard tower, I kind of like it almost running at an angle here. Something like this. Then, let's see. This square is actually a little bit off. See, I told you I was a little OCD about that. Um, so we could do in this here, I'm kind of envisioning for the guard tower something along the lines of a uh, two- or three-story structure that will have the first story will be um, cobblestone. And this is going to be, so this will be like the door. And then all of this, just for the sake of this, we'll go real quick. So you get the idea. We're going to go cobblestone through here. And then I'm thinking maybe a little offset there. And then we'll come up with at least one more. It'll be kind of this uh, typical medieval style. I don't even know what this is called. I've used it a couple times. You know, maybe I should find out what it's called. But where you might have, uh, so all these lines here would be like uh, wood framing, almost like a stucco. And then you have like windows here, you know, something like that. I don't know. Uh, just to give you the idea. And then um, we could go with either a second story or uh, just put a nice roof on there. Um, actually, I like the idea of going up like this and having, since it is a guard tower, you know, maybe we've got a uh, level that is um, open. Not open topped, but uh, maybe a little railing or something. Um, so this is one of the first terrain pieces I made when I first started getting into the terrain crafting. Um, so I'm thinking the top would be kind of in this vein, but I'm not wanting to use this or replicate this. Um, it's kind of tedious. This piece, I don't think will sit just on there. And it's cheating. If I just throw this guard tower on the frozen terrain, I think that's cheating myself and you guys and the players because it's something I already built. But... I just want to give you an idea. I'm thinking something along the lines of this in the uh, top section. So, uh, Wilox says, go tall, real tall. <laughs> um, okay, so I think, I think what I'm going to do when it comes to the building phase is the ground piece here is going to be the easiest and cutting the river out we're probably going to go with uh some of the uh pink polystyrene foam insulation type stuff um a simple hot knife uh and um some other techniques that i'll show you when we get to it to get these edges uh sitting on another base i uh, will have some rocks in the river uh one of the effects i really want to show you guys is and I don't have one of my pieces readily available. Uh, yeah, okay, here we go. So I've done this. Hopefully this will show up all right. I've done this before. This is a little more on the bluish side. Um, but I did these uh, chunks of broken frozen ice. I guess that's a, <laughs> a bit of a, what do you call that? 
oh my gosh, redundancy. Um, but anyway, uh, these were for some tentacles that were bursting out of the ice. And um, these are actually made from a dice box. Uh, so like the typical Chessex clear plastic dice box. Um, and the technique is actually pretty simple. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this because I'm going to be using some of these broken pieces. Sorry when you hear my voice break like that. It's because I keep glancing up and trying to read while I'm talking. Um, so, and I see we Wylock, uh, I love your idea. What if a tribe of hill giants happens by during one encounter, they're in conflict with the bugbears. I actually like that better than the idea I had. My idea was going to be goblins and bugbears, and then the fighting was going to arouse the troll that was under the bridge. Um but I actually like the idea of the giants. I wanted to have something that's aggravated by the fighting that gets called in um, so that while for fifth level PCs, maybe the goblins and bugbears are relatively easy, but as they're cutting through these things, suddenly the giants come in and um, so there's the potential for what, <laughs> what you suggested here that maybe they push the tower over onto the bridge, which that could create a whole unique dynamic for um, the, the the whole tactical situation, especially if we have, you know, if PCs are over on this side fighting ranged or something like that. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about, going back to what you said, Wylock, about making this thing tall, is my plan for this piece here is to have a base floor. So this is going to be kind of a hybrid of DM Scotty's terrainscapes and the 2.5D slash 3D. Um, I do mostly the 3D, but I've been experimenting with you have a base here, and then as if they go in, you lift the whole thing off, and then we can see the floor plan down here. And then... Uh, same thing if they go up to the next level, then you can move that over so you can have pieces set aside to see the interior structure of each level. So I think what's going to affect the height of this is going to be how long all this takes. And honestly, I don't think it's going to take that long to do all this. I think the bulk of my time is going to go into building this guard tower. And it needs to be kind of run down, um, so it makes sense that it could be toppled easily. Um so I'm definitely going to put that one in uh, giant, although I like the idea of frost giants since we're sticking with the winter theme. And I believe Let's see which one's which. Okay, I got a stone giant. Yeah, I got a frost giant mini um, that I got out of the uh, Tyranny of Dragon set, I believe. Uh, so that could come in nicely. I think I only have the one. Um, but there's no reason this stone stone giant dude right here can't represent uh, another one of the giants. Um, so that's going to be a fun little challenge as they come in, uh, you know, to topple this thing over. I really like that idea, Wylock. Um, giants enter the fray. So... I think that's going to be good in terms of the encounter itself. So now I'm going to get back in a minute to going into detail on some of these terrain pieces and how I think it's going to be best to do these. Um, but I want to go to the encounter and think of it in terms of uh, these PCs. There are going to be three of them, um, and they are... They're going to be already in, you know, obviously they're already going to know each other. So it's an encounter. So, you know, very similar to a one shot. Um, well, I guess it is actually a one shot, um, but just a single encounter. We're going to do um, that they already know each other. They're traveling together. The guys that are playing together, uh, I'll give them a shout out real quick. Uh, one of them is my son, uh, Zach. 
Um, he has his own YouTube channel called Community Link, where he does Lego stop motion videos. Um, if you want to head over there to Community Link on YouTube and check that out. Um, and then the other two guys don't have a channel, uh, but one of them has been on a couple of things with me. Um, uh, Dwight and Tim, they will be joining as well, at least for this first one. We may have some other friends come in for other shows. At any rate, why are they here? Are they just traveling through this frozen wasteland and they have to cross this bridge and, uh-oh, there's a guard tower. We better check it out. Or are the uh, are, should we have some kind of a MacGuffin in there? Um, and that could even be an opportunity to create a, um, a little bit of scatter terrain. Uh, or maybe, maybe it's a person. So, uh, what is the, um, objective here? Uh, it could be that, a nearby tribe had somebody was kidnapped, maybe a couple of their, uh, members of their tribe, of you know, or not even to be a tribe, a village, whatever. Um, maybe they were kidnapped, and uh, they've hired the PCs to rescue uh, their children or this family, or maybe it's the mayor of the town or something like that. So it could be people. Um, it could be that um, it's a thing. Uh, maybe there's a particular magic item that they're in search of or a weapon or something like that. So I'll let you guys kind of think on that. What do you think would be a good MacGuffin or uh, objective to the quest for why the PCs are here and that they're going to this exact area and that would compel them to want to go into uh, this guard tower? And I'm going to look at, uh, let's go over here to the bridge real quick. I actually think with this basic structure that I'm envisioning a pretty simple construction actually. I think if let me let me turn it on its side here and just give you an idea of what I'm thinking is uh, so let's see, let's do a little more scale here. Let me grab let me grab a I'm grabbing a couple goblins and I have all my villains out but none of my good guys but I'll grab these couple of bug bears and that'll that'll help so as we're looking at how wide the bridge should be here's a couple of goblins um, you know we're looking at one two three four five six seven eight nine ten We'll go with a 15-foot wide bridge, so that's going to be uh, three inches across. Um, whoops, my lines aren't very straight. I do great with an exacto blade in hand, but sometimes my lines aren't always the straightest. So we'll move these guys over here. So here's what I'm thinking for just the general structure of, of the bridge. From the top down, you're going to have, uh, again, more cobblestone on here. Uh, this is going to be um, cobblestone and dirt. It could even be broken up. You know, it could, could have some holes in it. Part of the walls here are tore apart. Uh, maybe indicating some previous fighting or that it's just uh, a really old bridge. Um, uh, okay, so Jason says the tower might be a safe place to stay for the night on the way to something grander. Uh, Wylock, the bridge is the only crossing for miles, therefore it is an important trade route. Bugbears and goblins have been pillaging Caravans, clean them out. Jason says they've probably been using the tower as the home to raid the trade route from. Excellent ideas, guys. Uh, so whether we have a specific reason for them to be there or they're just passing through, they're not getting across 
without having to deal with these uh, goblins and bugbears. Um, so these pieces here are going to be the uh, half-inch foam insulation. And unfortunately, oh wait. For those of you that don't know, um, I realize that uh, many of you coming from uh, maybe tabletop RPG group or other groups, or maybe you've never used terrain before, you might not know what I'm talking about. So just to give you an idea of the thickness, I'm thinking is I like this stuff for the walls. So you're going to end up with these really thick, it's a sturdy bridge. And there's going to be, um, I'm actually going to use uh, some of this stuff, which is dollar store foam core. And it's got a bit of a flex to it, particularly once you start etching into it. But you can see I can get a pretty good um, arc going there. And uh, if I cut a strip three inches by uh, what may end up being six or eight inches, um, which is pretty close to what this piece is here. Yeah, this piece is nine inches. Um, so that might be good for our, our, uh, for our bridge. And here's what I'm thinking then is there'll be some kind of uh, pieces glued in here that this will sit on. And then when it comes to the arches that are here, um, I've done this before. If I make the arches big enough, I should be able to etch this stuff and bend it enough that it forms the uh, inside of that. Uh, so it'll be a full, complete structure. Um, so we'll kind of play around with that. And, and uh, as you can see, fine, I got a pen I like to use here my ballpoint pen uh, just show you here um, that you can do a very easy it doesn't have to draw but I don't know if you guys can see that without it actually drawing um, try this other one here uh, so these ballpoint pens make so you can draw some nice uh, cobblestones and stuff on the bridge so i'm not worried about any of that that's gonna be pretty cool uh there's a cool technique you can do to make stuff look broken away uh, lots of people online use this where you just take your thumb and your forefinger and you start pinching away um so this can help uh something that i like to do as well and i need to get some new ones of these and i've showcased this on some of my other videos is you can take these this is just a simple emery emery board and i like to just take it and just kind of bounce it in uh, turn it at different angles and i'll do that before i even start doing my cobblestones because that helps to put in some of the shapes or maybe i'll do it afterwards uh again a little bit more um so anyway uh, just to give you a kind of a sneak peek of some of the techniques I'll be using in the coming weeks to build some of this. Um, and we will be doing at least probably next weekend sometime, uh, be doing at least one live crafting session. Uh, but my plan is to take lots of photos as I'm building this stuff and post it on uh, facebook.com slash mini terrain domain. If you haven't already liked it, go ahead over there and give us a like so you can keep up to date on Imagine Build Play and everything else that I'm doing. So anyway, all of that to say, this bridge, I think, while the cobblestone is going to be kind of time-consuming, I think the bridge is going to be a pretty easy part of the build. Um, maybe two or three hours tops with... Uh, drawing all the cobblestones and doing the painting and stuff. Uh, let me look at the comments here. It probably looks like Cuckoo and Monster and Flake. The design backfires. Use the heat gun, craft foam to form the arches. Um, I've tried using the heat gun with this foam core stuff, 
Um, and unfortunately, it actually uh, the heat gun actually makes it harder. It starts to melt it a little bit. Um, but I have been wanting to try this because I've heard that it works. Is once you have your piece ready, um, and and I can actually show you. Let me show you an example here first of this part. Um, so one of the things I would do for that interior is it's going to have brickwork be the interior part of the arch. So I'm just doing this quick and dirty. Um, so I'm using my sharp pencil and I'm drawing the base lines. And of course I would go in and I would do my brick lines along like this. But the point is, as you draw those in there, you actually create, and I forgot, I usually take my knife and actually dip in there a little bit. And then I go over it with the pencil. So you end up going about halfway through this and you make it flexible. Uh, once the pencil marks go in, um, you create like a channel. And just like with card, corrugated cardboard, so you can start to see that already, that it's getting a little more flexible. So what I would like to do is submerge it in really hot water and then bend it to the shape I want because it's going to be nice and soft and pliable and then hold it there. Uh, maybe even make some kind of a little uh, bracket or jib to hold that. Um, so I'll make sure to, to focus on that, cover that uh, during the tutorial section. So I see Wylock says uh, maybe the, uh, maybe we make the um, house all crooked and kind of mousetrappy, you know, maybe like it's a goblin made structure. Um, that is very possible. Um, I've not yet tried doing something like that where, you know, to make it deliberately, um, kind of ramshackle. Uh, so that could be interesting trying to figure that out. Um, I kind of like, I like tall structures. I like making things big. I like making things tall. Um, Um, oh, okay. I got you. Okay, I got you, Wylock. Um, so the tower was built long ago, but the current residence. Okay, I missed Jason's comment there about meaning the tower could have goblin defenses in place, too. Um, I got you. See if I read all the comments, I can follow what you guys are saying. Um, so we're looking at the key things here being a river runs through it, a bridge over troubled waters, and I can't think of a movie title with, with guard in it. Um, so, uh, five... I'll give a point of inspiration. Whoever can come up with a movie title with guard in it to go along with my my bad uh, movie title comparisons here. <laughs> so, does do you guys can you guys think of anything else that you'd like to see in this? I mean, we're looking at like I said, we've got our our river. We're gonna have some broken ice in there, so we're gonna have a uh, broken ice tutorial um that's going to be something to show you guys uh the bridge some of these pieces may just be through photos or speed builds um and we're going to do at a minimum we're going to have uh three levels of the guard tower i do wylock i like the nearby tree line or at least on one side um i'm toying with how to how i want to do that um, for this particular build, I'm working with primarily the things that I have on hand. If I have an opportunity to get some uh, things, some discount miniature trees or something like that, I'd like to do that. Um, I might even experiment with something using parts of uh, live trees. Or I might use some, uh, rather than pine, I might go with some of the skeletal trees of um you know to make them look frozen and bare 
So we could do, yeah, you could do some, some trees maybe along this edge here. You know, the road's kind of heading off this way. So maybe there's an opportunity for some cover in here. And I was thinking with the goblins and bugbears that maybe one squad is here in the guard tower and um, just when the PCs think they got them beat, the other squad returns. Maybe they were out hunting, gathering some food for them. <coughs> Excuse me. So then they'll have to face off with that. And around that point would be uh, – that would be where the giants come in and – I'd have to figure out, and I'd probably just play it by ear, you know, what direction, from what direction do the giants come? Uh, you know, maybe the giants are coming in from the other side of the trees. Uh, maybe the sound of breaking trees is what announces their arrival. Um, you know, a nice uh, passive perception in the midst of combat to see if anybody notices um, the sound of the trees breaking. Um and then if there's any goblins up in here, maybe the PC's not, um, the giants don't care, but they know that this is the bugbear goblin tower, so they just come in. I just picture, I picture one of these guys just coming in and shoulder tackling into this tower, and maybe it takes a couple of hits um, to topple it um, so that, you know, it gives the PCs a chance to react to to what's going through there. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the trees, you know, after I said that, while like, I don't think the trees are going to be a problem because, um, like I said, I can always use um, broken twigs and stuff from my yard uh, as the uh, frozen um, barren trees of winter. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. I like them crashing through. Uh, so I have two giants. Let's see, if we throw some goblins in there. See, goblins don't have pack tactics, so it's not too bad if there's a lot of them. Three fifth level PC. I, just so you guys know, I don't do a lot with the maths. I don't. I still haven't built anything using fifth editions encounter builders because it's too much math. I just want to throw a bunch of crap at them and see what happens. Um, I only have so many of the minis, but I do have a lot of variation on the goblins. Um, I have at least two, maybe three or four of these bugbears. So that might dictate um, might dictate what, you know, how many I, I, I have on there. Um, shoe. When you ask it, the water, Wylock, are you saying in terms of the encounter itself? Um, I have some ideas for how it's going to be built. But, yeah, I definitely think there should be a mechanic for uh, – there should be some kind of a mechanic for um, if anybody gets tossed into the water. Uh, or, gets, you know, if the, especially when the tower falls and it hits the bridge um, – there's a chance PCs are going to go flying over here, uh, you know, what have you. So, um, you know, it could be, it could be applying, see, I think my, both my book and my, all right, let me grab, see if I can grab this without knocking stuff down. Uh, that was a very quick fail. All right, grabbing my trusty 5th edition shortcut here. The I'm looking at the DM screen, and I'm thinking possibly um, possibly uh, a condition, or maybe if they fall into the fridge of water because it's so cold, they automatically get one level of exhaustion, um, something like that. Uh, 
just let's see if I can. Chester Nario. Uh, a fork. Okay. So one side of the should have a fork. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that might make more sense for that fork to be on the side that the PCs are going toward, maybe. Um, yeah. You put some kind of a signpost thing in here, pointing to different towns or something. Certain death. Good evening to you, Eric Sheely. Um, so yeah, and just so you guys, if, if you guys that are sticking around already for this, this first hour here, um, first of all, I greatly appreciate it. And for people that are just popping it, oh, wait, okay. Okay. I totally misread that. Sorry, Jester, Jester Nario. You're saying one side of the river should have a fork. Okay. So you could have... Because I've got the bridge here that's got these two channels. Part of that's just the support structure. But you could have the river coming in like this. And you, basically, you end up with a little part of an island in there. Um, something like that. Uh, so let's see. My river is not going to cut straight through. So then. So kind of something like this. And then you end up with the the bridge over here. What do you think? Thinking like that. Um, and then I did want to kind of you know I kind of want to throw some rocks in here. That's some of the ice is broken up against uh, something like that. So um, yeah, I'm definitely thinking uh, the mechanic could have to do with. Um, right now I'm thinking a level of exhaustion and adding to what uh, Jester and Ario just said that, you know, if they, if there's bad guys over here on this little island piece, and it forces the PCs to deal with them, and maybe they don't have, they can't quite get them with ranged attacks. They're gonna have to figure out a way across the river to get to there. Um, I like it. I think, let me bring my ruler back in here. So, hey, I don't, I don't know how to figure this stuff. Um, Let me think this through real quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Sorry, I'm trying to do something a really hard way that somebody like Wylock, who's an engineer, probably knows how to do this really quick. Um, I got a hundred things going through my head right now, so I can't figure this out. If I have a twenty by twenty, what is my diagonal? It's it's a number. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just trying to figure out if I've got enough room. If twenty by twenty is big enough, you know. Looking obviously, looking at this little tiny thumbnail sketch, everything seems cr crowded. As I start to sketch um, this here, I see that there's going to be plenty of space. Um, let's think of this in terms of game terms a minute, too, that if we're talking 20 by 20 is our basic play area, uh, we're looking at, 
we're looking at a uh, hundred feet, I think. Yeah, a hundred feet in game terms. Um, so it's a thousand square feet that they're going to be fighting in. And engineer Wylock to the rescue, twenty-eight inches on the diagonal. So we're going to have almost thirty inches of river uh, that these guys are going to be able to navigate. So the bridge. If we're putting the bridge at the center. And we know we got 28 inches here. So we're going to end up with about 50 feet or so here if I make this. I'm looking at this thing being right around 8 inches. It doesn't have to be a huge bridge. It just has to be an important bridge. I mean, you're talking uh, 40 feet of river that has to be crossed. Um, and it's got steep banks. Uh, the river's the whole way that way. So the traders are definitely going to need this to get their wagons over it. Um, you know, maybe if I have time, I can build some kind of a, a quick little, like, broken wagon or something to show where the goblins and bugbears have already taken out part of a caravan. Um, Wow, a bunch of math wizards out there. If I was focused, I would be able to figure that out, but in all actuality, I'd probably Google it. I don't know how many of you remember how much trouble I had figuring out the angles of my pyramid. Good Lord. Thank God for the Internet. Why do I need to do the math when I got at least three of you here that can do it? A point of inspiration to each of you. So just to, for a quick recap here, we are looking at... Our bridge is the centerpiece. We're going to have the river with some kind of a um, with some kind of a split in it. So it's got a fork running through. Um, we're going to have possibly some dead, broken trees in there. We're going to have a at least three story. Um, we're going to have at least a three story um, guard tower here. We're going to have at least two squads of goblins and bugbears, and then we're going to have some frost giants come into the fray. Um, Jason, there's absolutely no reason that you couldn't use this exact concept in Pathfinder. Um, the encounter, obviously, I'm I'm talking of it in terms of fifth edition, but obviously the terrain and uh, the basic monsters and stuff are all going to fall in there. Your mechanics are going to be a little bit different, but uh, you know you could really use just about any system. You could use this kind of a terrain, and you know at the very least you'd be able to add in your um, use the basic techniques of building this kind of terrain uh, for Pathfinder. Um, I've never played, oh, I take that back. I played one game of Pathfinder, uh, but it was right around, it was during the play test for 5th edition, and I just fell in love with 5th edition, and it's just so much easier for me. So that's what I do with that, or why I do it that way. So keeping in mind, this has to be built in a two-week period. Um, trying to see... So I don't know, I'm going to slide this through just mostly for myself. This, obviously I've used this for painting and stuff, but um, from this corner to this corner, we're looking at 20 inches. So I've got one of my other handy tools. And just do a quick mark here. Um, I'm just going to do this real quick. Because, again, this isn't the terrain building part. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, once we end this live show here, I'm going to start doing some practical groundwork. Um, I'm probably going to do a little more of a scale size. And maybe we'll do it here uh, on the show. Um but what I just did is I just marked at 20 by 20. So from here, I'm going all the way to this line. And then, again, 
that's a that's a great size board. I wish I could zoom this camera out a little bit more. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make you guys look at my ugly mug again. Uh, I just want to show you. Let me do this without stopping the broadcast. Switch to this. All right. Hey, guys. You got to see my ugly face again. Um, I just want to show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, let me... Grab my handy, not sharp, exacto blade here, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty cut through this. This is how I work. A lot of the times, I just start grabbing stuff and cutting at it. So this piece of foam core, this is the size of what I'm looking at. This is 20 inches by 20 inches. Put that in perspective. This is a, this is the bugbear. Um, so I think we got plenty of room here. Uh, like I said, it's hard when you're looking down at the bottom, uh, looking at these sketches. Um, so what I'm going to do, real quick, move these minis. And let's hop back over here. So we're looking back down at the bottom. Okay. I just, I don't have my wide angle on. Um, I wasn't, I don't have enough desk space for that. Or I would start sketching the actual river itself. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Drop. I'm purposely self-deprecating. Um, oh, Wylock, that quick and dirty, imperfect edge is just driving you nuts. What if I actually use that piece? <laughs> uh, when I'm actually doing the crafting, it does bother me. That's a scrap piece. It's got a huge... It's got a huge curve to it, so I will be making some perfect cuts along that line. Uh, so don't don't have any fear there, Wylock. <laughs> now I know how to get under your skin, though. I'll uh, I'll craft some tiles up, and they're all going to have edges that don't quite match up, and I'm going to send them to you. Be on the lookout for that uh, right around April first. Um. All right, so I think we've got the a great concept for the river. We've got a idea for a simple bridge. Um, all right, let me throw this out to you guys because I know. All right, hey, thanks, thanks for stopping by, Wallach. I appreciate it. We're not going to go much longer here anyway. Thanks, thanks a lot, and mitida to you too. Um, so we've got everything else. Uh, the river, the bridge is fairly simple. Um, let me throw this out to any of you crafters that may still be watching, people that have done this before. What ideas do you got for snow? Um, I did snow terrain once um, for the pyramid. Let me grab this real quick. I just want to show you this little section here in the pyramid where I did some uh, snow and ice. And I guess it's okay. Um, this was a mixture of PVA, uh, a little bit of water, I think. Yeah, water and PVA and baking soda. Um I don't know. I guess it it does all right. It was kind of a pain to work with, and I don't know how if I want to make up such a huge batch to try to cover an area like this. Um, I part of my goal is to do this as cheaply as possible, so I don't want to spend a bunch of money on um, buying supplies. A snow roll from Walmart is that like a 
Is that like a cottony kind of a thing? All right. I'm AFK for a moment. Back in a quick sec. Okay. Sorry. Pyramid falling down. Uh, yeah. So foreground has snow and ice products. Baking soda and flour will yellow over time. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I also want something, something I, I have neglected to mention here and is very important for those of you that are watching, whether you're watching the live cast now or you're watching this recorded later is at the end of the month when my, uh, my friends and I get together and play this, just prior to the live play session, there is going to be about a 30 to 60 second trailer that's going to just show you some quick glimpses of the terrain in glamour shots. And then you're going to have an opportunity to comment on that trailer video, and one person will be selected from those comments... And at the end of our actual play on the encounter, that person will win this encounter. So everything that we're talking about building here, the river, the bridge, the guard tower, you're going to win it all. And we'll work out the logistics, but I will ship it to you. Um, so just a little more incentive to, for you to, to keep going along. Um Yeah, painting the snow works as well. See, something I actually thought about doing is I have I have a little, I can't get to it right now, but I have a little container of, like, the play sand. And, yeah, I know it's not the same consistency, but I, I think I'm going to try to do, maybe, maybe I'll just do a test piece with it, and I'll put some of the sand down, and then I'll try painting it like the snow. You know, doing the the gray, a little bit of light, light gray and white, um, maybe with just a little, little tiny bit of dry brushing of a really pale blue or something like that. I'll do some experiments with that. We'll see how it works out. Um, but yeah, it looks like a couple of you guys are responding about the possibility of winning the train terrain. That's the whole. That's that's really the whole thing behind this. Imagine, build, play, win, is that the community? You guys get to help me. Um, you guys get to help me imagine what it is we're going to build. You get to vote on the idea like this one that gets selected. You get to help me conceive of the idea, the encounter and the terrain. And then you get to watch us play on it and then you get a chance to win it. And this first season is going to be January, February, March, April, and May. And we'll see how it does. Um, if it does well, for this first half of the year, then we'll be back at the second half of the year with some more stuff. Um, I have some flock gesturnario. Um, that's another thing I have uh, besides the flock is, well, what I have is, is uh, uh, color is it? Green. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of lighter greens. It's not going to paint very well, although maybe if I paint it, it'll look like it's, uh, um, maybe it'll look like it's, uh, frost covered grass. Another thing to try out with. And then, um, yeah, win is only 25% of the show. You're correct. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'll do, what I'll do is I'll take a couple pieces of this, th these pieces of foam and I'll, I'll cut out like two inch by two inch sections and I think I'm gonna do some with sand I'm gonna do some with sawdust and I'm gonna do some with uh, Putting regular flock down and then doing a dry brush of white over it um, Or stippling in some white to look like snow and we'll just see what they look like and I'll throw them up on the mini terrain domain Facebook page um, Yeah, sorry, it's <laughs> Just an ario. it's it's <laughs> In part because I want to say it correctly, but the computer is quite a ways away, and 
it's I keep having to shift my head right on the edge of the bifocals. Plus the lights on the side here are really bright. All to a perfect perfect storm. Um, I get made fun of. My wife and kids make fun of me because I mispronounce things all the time. Um, so I don't want you guys to make fun of me too. Uh, Raymond, do we do you have any elevation change on the non tower side of the river? Um, so yeah, I haven't really talked about that. Um, <coughs> I know it, it kind of seems like the whole thing that I'm doing here is going to be a very a very flat is going to be a very flat uh build and that's not the intention at all i'm probably going to use my foam core and do a uh use some kind of a rasp or something like that and do some roughing up of the terrain digging some stuff out uh i may even uh do maybe kind of like a paper mache over the top of it uh throw in some newspaper and stuff i definitely want to have some elevation uh, differences in here um, just to make the terrain more realistic um, you know it might even be on a smaller scale just around like the the little island piece here um, and kind of obviously the road I think would be relatively flat but I still want it to be rough um, another something that may work actually as I'm saying this that might work for this stuff is uh, infinite role play uh, Nelson over there has a um, Nelson has a uh, oh I'm drawing a blank on what he called it uh, some kind of a paste it's a mixture of baby powder PVA glue and uh, acrylic paint just to give it a color that you want it to be so I may even do something with that why can I not think of what he calls that stuff um, Anyway, uh, yeah, torching, torching the poly could work. Um, I've done similar stuff with uh, with a soldering iron to do specific areas, um, and even cutting some of the river out may be done that way. Um, I think I don't want to mix up the credit here. I think it was Black Magic Craft that recently had the. Um, doing little ponds and stuff using a clear nail polish. That's for something a little more shallow, but maybe if I cut out some of the river, I could do that with the base of it. Use some kind of an acetone-based uh, product to lightly paint over the bottom and give it that, that kind of rough edge. I'm actually thinking I'm going to do something for the water, mostly because it's going to be mostly uh, frozen, um, you know, broken chunks of ice or frozen... Um, I bought this for, where did it go? I bought this for another project. I have a tutorial coming on how to make simple silicone molds uh, using 100% silicone acrylic. And I think I might use this to actually to be uh, the river. Um, it's cheap. It's easy to apply. And you're automatically going to get some of that waves of rushing water kind of thing. Um so another thing I'm going to experiment with. And I like the idea that if I have all of my ice chunks kind of prepped ahead of time, that I can kind of stick them in this stuff and it will adhere. So that's kind of what we're looking at for the river itself. <clears throat> so the guard tower, let me kind of shade these in a little bit to show the... I was kind of thinking this uh, classic medieval look with the the wood, you know, maybe even having the the little bracer things here. Um, however, that goes. I don't want it to look too good, you know. It should look kind of ramshackle, um, and then having the open. Maybe instead of having like like I have here this open uh, like it's a deliberate guard tower. Maybe instead it's oh I like this. What if this top level is the roof is kind of partly broken apart? Um, so there's only part of part of the roof is there. There's some exposed beams. 
but the guard tower itself is a little ramshackle. Uh, I keep using the word ramshackle. Is texture paste. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. Um, anyway, it's it's a little ramshackle. Dad, there's that word again. A little guard tower. little cupola, what I'm trying to say. Uh, maybe not with the roof. Um, I actually... In the military, we did something similar when I was in Bosnia where we took an existing house and we built a cupola on top, or rather the engineers did, um, that we pulled guard from. So that inside here, the actual house would be a ladder that leads up to that. And maybe there's a, um, a ballista or something up there, maybe a couple of mounted crossbows that they're going to use to shoot down into um, yeah I, I thought about that just scenario um, I don't know if you saw the guard tower I showed earlier from an old build um, I wanted it to look like an appropriated like maybe it's an abandoned inn or uh, tavern or wayside thing along the the travelers road that they've taken over. Um, I think this piece here, the whole guard tower is going to be the, the, the level of intricacy on this piece here is going to be determined by how long all of this takes. I really don't see a lot of this taking a long time, but, that's going to really dictate how much time I have for this because I've really only got a two week period. Um, for those of you that may have come in uh, a little bit late, the actual encounter that we're looking at is going to be the PCs are traveling, either traveling through or they've been hired to eliminate the goblins and bugbears that have taken up residence in this, this abandoned structure. And uh, there's going to be at least at least one or two here at the guardhouse uh, squads of goblins and bugbears. Um, and then somewhere along the line, a couple of frost giants are going to come in and join the fight. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Abandoned, mostly destroyed building, uh, retrofitted. Um, I can show you a little bit of a practical. This is a project I had a while ago that literally fell apart on me and I'm trying to repair it. Um, but it'll use this kind of a basic style. I know the lighting isn't great for this. Um, but this is looking at the one end of it. So it'd be using these wooden, and these are just simple craft sticks over um, foam core. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then maybe it would be in terms of size, kind of t let's take off like two or three inches off of this or even down to this. That looks like it's about a 20 foot by 20 foot. Uh, let me measure this real quick. I don't remember what it was on this end. So, yeah, it'd be like 25. So 25 by 25, um, which is a really good size building or something like that. And then the roof itself could be... Um, you know, partially destroyed, maybe one wall is busted out. Um, just an old decaying place. Uh, Eric says lower level of tower being the mill. I don't think for this one, I think that's starting to get a little too intricate for the time frame that I have. Um, <coughs> I'm looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 10 to 20 hours that I'll I'll spend total on this whole piece. So I, I'm just thinking that the lower level would kind of be like storage. The second and third levels were probably intended as second level probably is the primary living space. Third level, maybe like upper bedrooms until whatever happened that caused it to get destroyed. Um, Uh, now, that's not a bad idea. Um, 
Drawroff says might have the tower partially in the frozen river on pylons uh, would give the PCs a cool way of taking down the tower. We've also talked about the idea that maybe the giants come in and try to break it down. So let me let me come over here and just kind of envision this. Um, that you know we kind of got a little bit here, and then maybe this is the elevation change. This is the cutaway. So this is all like river and rocks and whatnot. Then you got the tower sitting here. And maybe part of it juts out over the water, um, which would make sense for a mill kind of a thing. So, and then maybe there's four pylons and then two more on that side. So if we just kind of go a little dimensional here for a minute. So you got these kind of timber type pylons, kind of like that, and then maybe a cross beam there. Uh, so there could be something to do with uh, spells or something else that could try to take that out. I could look at mill stuff. You know, maybe it's not as difficult to make a a mill as I'm thinking. Or maybe even to make a partial mill, like that part is broken off. <coughs> I'll have to look at some design ideas. Um, I did mention I want to make this so that this comes apart at each level. Um, that may be dictated by the time I have left or time I actually have to do it. Um, so we'll kind of play with that by ear. Um so yeah, we're looking at roughly a level, I'm thinking level four, level five, D and D five E, three PCs, um, two squads of goblins and bugbears, and then some giants doing in. Um, and we'll see if they can survive it. And some of the little extras that we might throw in here are uh, broken uh, wagon. Or wagons. Uh, one thing that definitely, one thing that definitely helps with that is I have an abundance of uh, wagon wheels. So yeah, I'll probably find a way to work a wagon or two in there. Um, <coughs> so yeah. So I want to give you guys a uh, another moment or two to, if you can think of anything else. I think we have enough elements in here. I like what's going to come from this. Um, some really, really cool ideas from the community. Um, people that helped come up with the idea, ideas of adding the, um, of adding the little uh, branch in the river and um the bridge at the centerpiece multi-story goblin bugbear tower possible pylons uh the goblins and bugbears are waylaying travelers over this major trade route um raymond can you go over again how do the giants fit in the suggestion was that Maybe there are a couple of local frost giants that are warring with the bugbears. And when they hear the sounds of battle, they're drawn toward it and they decide they're going to join in the fray. With their primary target being the um, goblins and bugbears. So there's a possibility for the PCs to find an accord with the giants. A possibility. Um the Giants may just not care and move on their way, or they may attack the PCs. So there's a lot of possibilities with that. So that was the idea. Um, draw off, I think the river is going to have the appearance of um, being at least already in motion um, with a limited ice flow. Um, I'm going to have to kind of play with that one. When I get to actually making the the river material itself, um, 
although it might not be hard to make a separate piece that maybe fits in over top of the ice that's just like uh, elements of um, to represent like a huge ice flow that just came in and maybe it tears the bridge apart, tears the pylons down. Uh, maybe it's a timed event based on how uh, the conflict is going. Um, maybe the ice giants, the frost giants, had a dam up the river and uh, they let it loose for that express purpose. So now I got to figure out what makes sense here for direction of flow of the river. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it won't be evident in the terrain. But I'm, I'm wondering if the river is flowing this way or if it's coming this way. So that might have an effect on it, you know, or maybe one of these, if it's coming from this direction, one of the uh, tributaries is um, where the giants have, like maybe over here, since we got the giants coming from this direction, um, <clears throat> that the ice flows are held up river here and they break it loose. It comes through, crashes into the bridge, starts going through the bridge and can take out the pylons. So, all right, I'm liking it. Uh, fourth or fifth level. Um, two to four bugbears. Um, I'm going to say six to 12 goblins. And two frost giants, though we'll probably have a stone giant subbing in for a frost giant. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it, Draw, draw Rough. Uh, crafting. I don't always craft um, for all of my games, but... I, my players always love it when I when I bring stuff to the table. Um, yeah, for the demon jester J, I'm going to be using clear caulk on the uh, for the actual river flow, and I've got a technique I talked about at the beginning um, that I've used before, and I've never shown a tutorial on with these. Uh, ice chunks that I did on these tentacles here uh, to make broken ice out of plastic. Um, and I would probably transfer, translate that over to a, um, translate that over to a, um, an add on piece for the ice flow. Um, yeah, it could go either way, just with stone giants or frost giants. The frost giants make sense because the whole theme is winter and it's kind of this frozen wasteland. Um, you know, maybe both the frost giant and an ice giant, or a uh, stone giant. I'm just looking at my giant minis, and I've got... Well, first of all, I've been talking about bugbears this whole time. Yet, I've been showing hobgoblins. Those are the bugbears. I don't know why I was showing hobgoblins. Um, so I could use a couple of those too, but, uh, I've only got one stone giant and one frost giant. So we'll kind of play it by ear there. And depending on how the, how the whole encounter goes, there's always the possibility for who knows what to show up. You know what I'm saying? You just never know who's watching over that guard tower and that bridge. So the PCs might want to keep their eyes open. <laughs> Where's my geyser? You know, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you, I really liked the geyser idea. Um it just it's added to, to the idea of potential projects. 
I was having a hard time coming up with the whole, the whole fitting the whole thing into the smaller encounter, and it was along with other ideas that had. There were several ideas for a frozen uh, village or t or town, um, and I really liked that idea for a larger build. Um, it would be easy to easier to already have a bunch of buildings and then just say, okay, now we've got a village. And then now here's the problem that's going on. What is this geyser? Why is it here? Um, so for those of you that are suggesting ideas, if your idea doesn't get selected for the vote or doesn't get voted on, don't feel bad about it. And don't think that I'm just casting these ideas off. I'm keeping a record of a lot of these and just adding them to possible things. If they get my mind thinking about how I could build it, there's the potential for a build and a tutorial there. Um, and again, there were some really good ideas that were just not feasible for a limited two-week build. And when I say two weeks, I'm not working for two weeks solid on these, obviously. I have a full-time job, so I have a couple hours each night and a few extra hours on the weekend when I don't have other obligations. That's why I say uh, I'm looking at 10 to 20 hours over the two weeks to be able to do this kind of stuff. Um, but I've been doing it long enough. I know how to do some of these things quickly, and I think it look pretty cool. And to whomever it is that wins it, I think you'll be very pleased to, uh, when this is all said and done, have had a part in coming up with the idea, having a part in the design process, and um, being able to use it in your own game. Yeah, there were a couple of those ideas that were really high high concept, um, incredibly detailed. I mean, my pyramid, I spent 100 hours over two and a half months building that. And I just, yeah, I can't do that for every one of these builds. So we'll do them in smaller parts. And one, one thing that we're talking about doing um, as we do this over the next few months is it would be kind of cool at the end to do a... Um, to do a uh, like a season finale kind of thing that maybe brings in elements of each month. Um, so I really don't have anything more to add to this. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you that came or went during this period of time. Everybody that uh, that contributed ideas during the show um that contributed ideas for the voting that voted everything so far i thank you so much um i ask that you please continue to watch this space um for more awesome stuff that we're going to be doing with this show imagine build play win we've already um gotten ourselves to the imagine phase and we've just started with this here on the build phase um, and the person that ends up winning, I think they're also going to win. Uh, I'm going to throw in these design sheets. I'll be using these custom MTD graph paper designs, um, for each one of the builds each month. Um, so if you aren't already head over to facebook.com slash mini terrain domain, give us a like over there. Uh, that's where I first post everything, but I like to share it out too. I'm going to shout out to the groups that I, I share to. Uh, check out DM Scotty's Crafts and Games. If it wasn't for DM Scotty, I would not be here. I would not be doing this. DM Scotty gave me my first inspiration. Uh, my first big build that I did, the first build I did was the giant purple worm based on DM Scotty's design. Um the Tabletop RPG One-Shot group on Facebook. I have run games through there. I've played games through there. There is an amazing group of people over there, so be sure to check them out on Facebook. And finally, Absolute Tabletop, the uh, official group. I think that's what it's called. I'm going to look that up while I'm closing out here. Um, I want to make sure I <laughs> steer you guys right. Uh, they are... Yes, Absolute Tabletop Official Group is what they're called. Um, be sure, whoops, man, I'm just screwing all kinds of stuff up here. Uh, be sure to 
um, check them out as well. Um, so those are the areas where I kind of will share this stuff out. Um, and subscribe, like, comment on this video, add more comments. If you're watching this recorded, go into the comments down below and add more ideas. I'll continue to check those out over the next couple of weeks. Here's what you can look forward to over the next couple of weeks, the next two weeks. Sometime next week will be, possibly next weekend, will be a live crafting show where I'll have a similar setup to what we have here. And I'm just going to be building and painting and talking to you guys. Um, I will have lots of in-progress photos, including the, as I test out the snow terrain, all, any additional ideas that I have, everything will be on the uh, Facebook page, mini terrain domain, or excuse me, facebook.com slash mini terrain domain. Um, and at least the broken ice um, and possibly a couple other pieces will do tutorials that will show up in the, in the over the next two weeks as well. Um, culminating in the last week of the month with the play section where my friends and I will play on this and then you will have an opportunity to win this terrain that I built. So again, and one final time, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Tell your friends about this. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that good stuff. Imagine, build, play, win. I'm Jake. This is Mini Terrain Domain. Have a good night and a good week. Mitada.